Blessed be and welcome to the Circle of Hekka. I'm Lady Amaris. Now I've had a, a couple of look at a few YouTube videos and I think some of them are, are on initiation. So I thought I would um, put in my two cents, as they say, um, into initiation and, and how initiation is viewed within the Circle of Hekka, mostly. Um, now, initiation means to begin. So when you're initiated into a group, it means that you begin within that group. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you are not a witch. It just means that you are not a witch within that group. Now, with that said, when you are learning, most of the time you are new to witchcraft in general. So when you are initiated into a coven, you're initiated into a, a, um, a, a style of witchcraft, a, a, uh, a tradition. And so you begin within that tradition. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to stay with that coven for the rest of your life. Some people do, but that doesn't mean that you are going to because Things change, people grow, people move apart. Sometimes um, covens, for one reason or the other, just disband and many people um, may want to um, work on their own, work as, work as a solitary. So when you're initiated, you're initiated into that coven, but you're also initiated into the tradition. You begin in that tradition. So there are many traditions and there are many covens. Um, now, the popular belief is that um, to be a witch you need to be initiated. Um, now that can be debated um, ad nauseum, uh, but um, when it comes to, to the tradition, the circle of Hekka, is that um, to be a witch you must be um, initiated within in the coven. Now, initiation as it is, is, is to begin. But when it comes to initiation, you, you're not able to initiate yourself. Now, you can have a dedication, you can have um, a, a kind of ceremony where you, you obviously dedicate yourself to the craft, you dedicate yourself to a specific goddess and god. Um, you can do that yourself. But initiation is about um, conflict and um, challenge and, um, and a little bit of stress. Now, people are going to go, oh, 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 can't have that, it's bad. Anything that has ever happened in your life where you have made uh, leaps and bounds um, spiritually or you remember um, quite well as a defining moment in yourself where you rose above and uh, you took on that challenge and, and you, you, um, you found something out about yourself that you didn't, didn't know or, or something grew inside you that you didn't know. It was some, um, that, that better part of you. That doesn't happen in comfort. So the, the whole uh, the adage is that change doesn't happen in comfort. So when you're initiated, you're initiating or you're beginning a change within yourself. You're going from being, um, uh, let's use a popular, you're going from being a muggle um, to uh, someone of um, a spiritual um, craft. Okay, so you're going from, say, a mundane um, perspective to a more enlightened spiritual um, perspective. And that's not saying that you are going to be enlightened and spiritual. That's something that comes with, um, with time, practice, and, um, and um, time. Um, it's not something that happens straight away. It's not like we lock the top of your head o um, off, open it up and put the secrets of the universe in and then you know, sew you back up and, and off you go. It's not like that. Um, it would be great, but it's not. So you're initiated into a, a tradition, into a coven most of the time, and that means that you are put through a, a type of challenge. You are put under a... Um, 
a, a little bit of stress. Now, I'm sure most of you have Googled initiation and had a look at uh, different initiations, and many of you have probably also read um, Raymond Buckland's complete book of, of witchcraft, um, which is a little bit of a misnomer because it's not really the complete book of witchcraft. It's a complete book of um, a good way to start, but it's not the complete book. Um, but it has uh, initiation rituals and um, it has um, how um, many covens will, uh, will, will blindfold and, um, and bind their um, initiate. Um, and I had one person once in one of my outer courts um, when I was talking about initiation and um, she said, oh, I know all about initiation. I've read Raymond Buckland's book. So, um, yeah, I know exactly what it's, what's going to happen. And um, I thought that was, that was quite funny, actually, because uh, in, in, um, in my tradition, in, in uh, the circle of Hecker, every initiation is catered for that person. So there are core elements within the initiation, but there are other elements that are to do with that individual. Now, each individual has certain um, challenges and, um, and some, um, some triggers and different things that are unique to that person. So um, as an example, um, say one person may be um, afraid of spiders um, so their challenge would be to um, say go through uh, a walk through an area which they are led to believe is full of spiders um, it's not actually full of spiders where we're not that evil. Um, but as an example, they're led to believe that. They're blindfolded. They may be walking through a certain area where slight little gossamer things may, um, may touch their, their skin, giving the illusion that they are walking through um, a spider, a spider um, city. Um, so that is a challenge of overcoming your fears, overcoming certain challenges, and they are also unique to, to each individual. So one person's um, challenge is not going to be the same as another person's challenge. Um, there are also certain things that happen within initiation which are um, designed specifically to um, awaken centers of the subconscious. Now the, the initiation process is about um, opening certain doors. Now, not flinging them wide open, but opening them just a crack, giving, giving the keys to those doors so those doors can start to be slowly opened and information and um, change occurs within the new budding witch. And this is something that happens on, on almost a cellular level. So it means that when you are initiated, you um, initiate a change within yourself. You awaken the, um, let's say, you awaken the witch DNA within yourself, something that everybody has, but it may be lying dormant in some, and it may already be awake in others. But the initiation process initiation initiates a change within you. And that change starts um, a lot of the time before the initiation itself because there is a process before, during and after an initiation. But the actual act of the initiation is about opening up those doorways and activating that uh, witch DNA. So once that is done, there is also the process that happens after the initiation. So there is the um, almost like a year and a day after the initiation. Because as I said, uh, we don't just open the top of your head and pour the mysteries of the universe in and you're suddenly a witch. When you're initiated, you're still not technically a witch. You have begun to learn to be a witch, but you aren't technically a witch. You are a newborn and you are going through um, the, the actual year now being a witch. 
learning the process, learning the circle casting, learning the how the seasons go and, and taking a, more of an active um, participation in the, the festivals which start to align you even more to the cycles of the earth and to the cycles of, of um, the, um, the area that you're in. Um, and that process means that you are slowly shedding the skin of your mortal self and you are starting to um, activate and flex those muscles and move those muscles um, and start to learn how to walk and talk and, and think and feel like a witch. And that doesn't happen straight away. Now, initiation, as I said, has, has three parts. It has the beginning section where you have the purification. It means that you go through uh, a certain time, and it's usually a month, where you would purify yourself. And that means that you make sure that you're eating um, clean, you're eating uh, non-processed foods, you're eating as many fruit and vegetables as you can, you, um, you're not eating any meat that can um, weigh you down. Um, so you are trying to um, almost purge yourself of any toxins so that you are as clean and as um, almost um, virginal, if you want to use the word, as you can be um, at the time of initiation. So there's also certain fastings. Uh, and again, that is catered for the person. Um, some people have medical problems, uh, medical things that they can't, um, they can't uh, participate in all aspects of a, of a fast. So again, it's catered for the person. Um, there are core aspects, but each in person is an individual and everything is individualized for the, um, for the person. Um, so one initiation is not going to be the same as another initiation. So we get to the part of initiation. There we go through that challenge. We go through that um, that finding you finding yourself. That it is the death of the mundane and the the birth of the witch. So there is that death and rebirth. One part of yourself dying, that mundane, um, maybe you could also call it the human part of you dying, and the, the awakened, enlightened, um, almost superhuman, um, the witch part of you coming awakened and alive. Now this is something that happens over the course of a year after you are initiated. Um, and uh, many people um, there's the, the, the saying that not everyone who is initiated ends up becoming a, an actual witch. Uh, sometimes what will happen is that uh, the, the spark of the witch is, is um, in, um, activated, but it is not nurtured, if it's not um, cultivated, then it goes back, it becomes dormant again. And uh, you have um, people who um, don't fulfill their full potential, let's say. Um, and so this is a process that happens for about a year afterwards. It, it's different for, for different people, but because it's a process of, of changing your, your actual makeup, it means that you need to have support, you need to have your, um, the, the other members of your coven to, to help to nurture. And, um, and, and help you along the way because you're going to come up against some obstacles, you're going to come up against some, some difficulties um, and that happens with any kind of new process uh, that you, um, when you're making um, way for the new, some things need to die, some thought processes need to die, some old ways need to, to go and there's that that process where you, sometimes it's a mourning period of, of different things that um, you, you, know, you once had different types of um, different types of um, rituals that you may have had, different, different things that, you, that you've done that now do not um, serve you in your new life um, as a becoming witch. Now, um, 
initiating someone and then just leaving them to their own devices is is kind of doing them a disservice as we said it's a changing of almost like your molecular structure and uh, just to to initiate someone and then to leave them is almost like um, having a newborn baby and, and leaving it out in the wilderness it's not going to thrive and uh, you need the support of your of your coven to help you along the way help you to to um, learn how to walk talk and uh, become the witch um, now as I said before this is just the way it is viewed in the circle of Hecker. Uh, it may be viewed in different ways, um, in different covens, and um, and different people may have different ideas about what initiation is. Um, but this is just the way that we view it, um, and um, many people have their own ideas. So no one person is again correct. Um, it works for what um, what coven is. Um, is working and how they view their their um, process of initiation. Uh, the other thing is that if you've been looking at um, different initiations, again, if you've been looking at Raymond Buckland's and you see that there is um, a binding and a blindfold, there um, many people misinterpret this to mean that you um, you degrade someone or you you try to um, hurt someone in some way or make them humiliate them or or all you know all of these types of things and that's not what initiation is about it's not about humiliation it's not about degradation it's not about that it's about uplifting someone and, and helping them through uh, a time of um, challenge and stress um, People are there at every point um, of the process. You're never left alone. You may give the idea that you are, but you're never left alone. There is always someone that is is there to you know, to help you if you stumble and if you fall, um, to help you up again. Um, so it's not it's not about humiliation. It's not about degradation. It's about helping someone um, become. Who they who they would like to be um, something better than they already are, um, and and that process um, so that takes trust, and it also takes some. It's a quality within yourself that you will strive against all odds to achieve your goal. It's almost like um, setting a test to find out the wheat and the chaff, as they say. The ones that are willing to do a little bit of work to achieve their goals and the others who who are just wanting it served to them on a silver platter. Um, and, and that is what one of the functions of initiation is. It's about finding out what you're made of. Uh, I do recommend initiation for some people. It's not, um, initiation is not for everyone. The path of the witch is not for everyone. And that's fine. There are different paths, there are different, different spiritualities, different modes of spirituality, and all paths lead to the one source. So it's not, this is the only path. Um, if it doesn't speak to you and if it doesn't move you in any way, then maybe there should be there's another path that you should be looking at. Um, so in the circle of Hecker, we do initiate. Uh, we take a long time before we initiate someone. The year and the day that everyone seems to um, tout um, is a guide. It isn't a hard and fast rule. I do not initiate anyone um, earlier than a year, um, and I don't initiate anyone at the end of the year and the day. It's not about ticking boxes. It's about when you are ready and when the coven is ready. Uh, it's a two-way street. When you're initiated into a coven or when you decide that you want to work with a coven, 
you have to be comfortable with the people that you are working with and those people have to be comfortable with you. So it's not a simple um, idea of I ask for initiation and you automatically get it. Because you are becoming part of a manifestation machine, if you will, then you are an integral part of that machine. And if you don't work well with the other members of or parts of that machine, if there is a is there a friction, if there's um, bits and pieces don't actually fit together nicely, then that machine is not going to work um, as effectively as it could. Uh, so it is a two-way street. You have to feel comfortable and the members of the coven have to feel comfortable as well. And that doesn't happen overnight. You need to get to know people. When you're working with a group of people magically, there is a connection that is formed and it's a, uh, an astral or spiritual connection. And when you are forging this a connection with someone that you don't actually know, it is almost like, um, let's say there's a, like an umbilical cord between yourself and, and the other members of, of the coven. And you... Um, um, give energy and you receive energy but if this energy is not compatible if there is um, if there's things that one member hasn't worked with and hasn't start to deal with then that's going to be felt by other members of the coven and so that can be a good thing but it is also can be um, a bad thing where you will have maybe illness will start to to creep in or people um, will start to um, filter one person's uh, psychic uh, garbage, so to speak. And, um, and that's not what it's about. It's about being able to work together. And uh, when you are part of a coven, you need to be able to work um, with those members um, on an on a equal setting, equal plane. So uh, let's see, let's, let's break it down again. Initiation is about purification. It's about opening up pathways within your subconscious. It's about challenge. This challenge cannot be done by yourself. Let's say um, there are very few people that can push themselves uh, to the edge of their limits. That is why many people uh, employ a personal trainer who will train them. Um, that's why many people have mentors, um, people who will challenge them and, and push them beyond their, their, their limits just to, to widen their sphere of, of capabilities. And uh, as I said, there are very few people that can do that for themselves. Many people need someone to facilitate that, which is why initiation will help that process, help you to become um, what you, you know, truly are. After the process of initiation, there is that integration. You should always integrate something that's happened with it, um, into you um, and be able to assimilate that into your, um, into your body, uh, into your mind, into your spirit. Uh, and that is a process that takes about a year to fully, to fully take hold. Um, so with anything, make sure that you assimilate Ask, assimilate, assimilate it into yourself. Uh, you have that time where you can um, it, it congeals into your body. It is the same as uh, when you study something. You need to have that time to to relax and and let it um, get into your um, into your brain properly. Um, that is why we have that time when we we sleep. We have the things that are learnt over the day, and then at night when we sleep, it becomes part of us. We assimilate it into our ourselves. We we categorise it. We we um, we work it out. Um, we do that in our dreams. So you need to have that assimilation. Um, I may talk about uh, initiation more in in. Uh, later videos but I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea about initiation and and what it actually means to a coven and and to myself um, and uh, yes merry meet merry part and merry meet again blessed be